Hey, Bob. Yeah. So I'm reading Jeremy's blog about Metroid. You know, especially Timeless. This is like the what 25th anniversary of the game. That's right. And I want to talk to him about it, except he's not around. And I'm like, what other white dude who plays old games can I talk to you about Metroid? And That's where I come in. <laughs> here you are. So it's the 25th anniversary. Were you even alive when Metroid like originally came out? Even Let me I just... was. I was a young boy of four. Okay. So Metroid was well above my abilities. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But uh, what I'm curious about is, you know, there's a lot of Metroids, but let's, you know, I have I have lunch to eat and things to do. Let's just focus on like the three best ones or something you want to talk about. That's like, a good idea. What would you say like are the three Metroids we should be discussing in this natural conversation? If I had to choose, uh, it would be Metroid Zero Mission for Game Boy Advance, okay. Super Metroid, and uh, Metroid Prime for GameCube. Okay. Yeah. So Zero Mission, I remember, was the GBA one. Was it a like nicer version of the first game or something like that, essentially? Or It was a much nicer, uh, much more intuitive, and far more expansive version of the first game. Okay. Uh, the first game is really, really hard to play now, so oh. I think that was a necessary uh, step for Nintendo, saying, here's how you can experience it, you know? Yeah, why, what makes it hard to play when you say something like that? Uh, the first Metroid? Yeah. It's just that game design still was kind of primitive in such an expansive um, sort of game like that. Mm -hmm. So the levels weren't always connected in the most uh, intuitive ways, um, sort of in the older Metroid games, I'm sorry, in the newer Metroid games, they would have more context clues as saying, you, you, you can bomb this wall, you can oh. do this here. In the original Metroid, it's more like bomb everything, you know, okay. just like in sort of the original Legend of Zelda, it was like set fire to everything, bomb okay. every wall, stuff like that. All right, and then, you know, chronology, that's followed by Super Metroid. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about, like, why Super Metroid is, like, the greatest, one of the greatest games ever, da da da. I'm not interested about why they think about it, I want to hear what do you like about Super Metroid so much? What I like about it is there is zero story, which was not, <laughs> which was kind of common in games at the time. Okay. But all the story that's told in the game is really told through the atmosphere and just like little moments. Um, there is an opening narration that's not that important, but I mean everything else within the game is just basically told with the elements of the game, sort of like uh, Half Life Two would do stuff like that later. Okay. But uh, it was really Nintendo that was kind of a pioneer in that sort of thing with uh, Super Metroid. I had not really heard that one. I heard people just talk about like you know. Going around being all like the complete non linear design and like the Metrovania in this way, but I hadn't really heard that angle. Well, yeah, that's part of it too. I mean, the yeah. game is really fun to explore. Yeah. And there are many ways to break it, which have been discovered throughout the years. Like, what's your favorite way of breaking it? Uh, I don't have, I don't know, I can't name anything specifically, but you can get almost any item out of order using bomb jumping tricks, stuff like that. So, so basically, it's like the master of sequence breaking is that. That game is all about sequence Yeah, breaking. definitely. Okay. And I think people have screwed around with uh, our next game, which is, uh, wait, we talked about Zero, zero Mission, yeah. sorry. Um, <laughs> but I know they, they're secret, uh, sequence breaking in Prime, too. Okay. How, is, is it as extensive in, in Prime as it is in Super Metroid? I don't know. It feels like people like Super Metroid more, so they've managed to okay. break it more. But uh, Metroid Prime is still a great game, yeah, sequence that's, breaking or not. That was probably the last Metroid game I had really f mostly, mostly played. I got like about 80% of the way through before I got sidetracked, but I really... To like how it was like a first person Metroid, and which is kind of what you were, I guess not what people were expecting, but it's first person Metroid, and if you know what's going in, that's exactly what you kind of got. From yeah, it. and uh, it could have gone so, so wrong. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't expect Nintendo to let it go wrong, but it was yeah. way better than it had any yeah. right to be, that game, I thought. How do you feel that one compared to like the other two Prime? Because I didn't get a potential to play Prime 2 and 3. Uh, the second Prime was sort of a disaster, <laughs> okay. just because it introduced this whole Dark World thing, where um, basically it expanded the space of the game, uh, it doubled the space of the game, but it was just really confusing getting around and stuff like that. Metroid Prime 3 is a really great game, I think that got overlooked just because people were a little burnt out on the idea of a 3, 3D Metroid at that point. Okay. But uh, it has really great controls and it's uh, much more scaled back in comparison to the second Metroid Prime game. All right. And you know what? I am going to go eat lunch, but <laughs> I now feel better having a nice 25th anniversary Metroid conversation yes. with a different white dude who plays old games. I hope I was uh, parish enough for you. Thank you, Bob. Yes. God be with you. <laughs>